A man ate an eight pound hamburger in 30 minutes. This is what happened to his organs. GF is a 40 year old man presenting to the emergency room with severe abdominal pain. He tells the admitting nurse that a burning sensation was radiating through his upper back and that it felt like his stomach was inside his neck. Eight hours earlier, GF was participating in an eating challenge hosted by a local restaurant. Anyone who could finish their eight pound hamburger within 30 minutes would not only get the burger for free, but they would get their picture tacked onto the wall. GF was a bit of a hamburger connoisseur himself, knowing meats and steaks. He looked at the pictures on the wall, and he knew it was his time to put on a show. Most people who tried the challenge would just make a spectacle and then chicken out and give up just after a few bites. The chef was reluctant to cook all this meat, but knowing that a serious burger enjoyer was here, it must be for real. So it is enough talking, and now it is time to grill this beautiful burger. So let's do it, the chef thought as GF calmed himself. Inside the dining area, GF was ready. The chef did a final check with the 73% lean beef meat and topped it with some cheese. The burger was brought out. GF took a good look. He was so hungry and he grabbed the juicy burger and started biting. Nearby, restaurant patrons caught wind of what was happening. GF was putting on a show. He didn't think that he'd need to pace himself, he just kept biting. Anything that came up, he would push right back down as he could feel the burger juices dripping off his chin. As he got into the groove of things, he became unsure if he was even chewing because he was so focused. Encouraged by everyone watching, he pressed on. Unquestionably, before the 30 minute mark, GF stood proud. He had completed the challenge, the burger free of charge, and his picture on the wall. At home now, GF thought he felt kind of weird. At first, he would burp and feel bits of ground beef and the slice of cheese at the back of his throat. The burger was sitting like a rock at a position higher in his abdomen than normal, squeezing up through his chest. He felt puffy and bloated but then pain started permeating through his body. He could feel something sharp in his upper back as he started to panic. GF tried to wash everything down with some water. The burger just wasn't moving, but then it felt like the water was hanging around at the back of his throat, and then his stomach started cramping. GF grabbed the armrests of his chair. He felt like the burger was oozing out of his throat, but he also felt like it was stuck like a rock in his stomach. In the bathroom, GF was brought down to the ground. He did have some movement come up, but then Things just kept getting worse as he gets into his car and he drives himself to the emergency room where we are now. Given this history of present illness, the medical team has some clues as to what's happening. First, GF's abdomen was not only hard to the touch, but it was also swollen. This could be because there's an eight pound hamburger sitting inside of him, but recently swallowed chewed ground beef shouldn't be that hard to the touch. What could be that hard to the touch is if the stomach perforated and is leaking gas from free air into his abdomen, something called pneumoperitoneum. Pneumo referring to air and peritoneum referring to, generally, a membrane that lines the abdominal cavity but in this case referring to the cavity where the abdominal organs are. Except an x-ray reveals no gas present in this area at least for now. A blood test finds that GF's kidneys have started shutting down. Excess white blood cells are now floating around for some reason, indicating that something in his body is either infected or inflamed, but what could it be? When the medical team looked at the x-ray, they thought they saw something there. Knowing that he had recently eaten an eight pound burger, a CT scan shows everyone the entire burger. The gastrointestinal tract, GI for short, is a long continuous muscle spanning from your mouth to your other end. When you eat, food often induces something called a stretch reflex. That is, the size and weight of the food will stretch the muscles of the GI tract and cause contractions that ripple through, leading to a bowel movement. This assumes that food stretches the stomach a little, but not like how eight pounds of ground beef would stretch it. Simplistically, the stomach is a bag lined with muscle that churns food, physically breaking it up before it can be absorbed into the body. But GF's stomach is a bag that's not adapted to suddenly having this much food. The swelling and the distension of his abdomen is immediately obvious, but serious problems are happening now due to this, bringing us back to inflammation. 
When doctors look at the blood test results, they notice that digestive enzymes are now floating around in GF's body. Just behind and underneath the stomach is a long organ called the pancreas. It's responsible for secreting digestive juices at the point where the stomach connects to the intestines, something called the gastroduodenal junction. Gastro referring to the stomach and duodenal being the duodenum, the first part of the small intestines where food enters and starts to absorb into the body. These digestive juices are enzymes that are meant to chemically break down carbohydrates, proteins, and fats so that the basic macronutrients of food can absorb into the body. If digestive enzymes have leaked into GF's blood, then it means that something is happening to his pancreas. If those enzymes are supposed to digest proteins and fats, and the pancreas is made of proteins and fats, then it means that his pancreas is now starting to digest itself. It can't contain those enzymes anymore, so they float around in his blood. The body detects this damage, sending white blood cells explaining the inflammation. But why is this happening? And does it have anything to do with why his kidneys are shutting down too? The organs in the abdomen are packed tightly, and they're close to each other. The human body has the ability to expand in order to adapt to the conditions placed upon it. When 8 pounds of burger is inserted into the body in 30 minutes, the addition of this mass makes the space tighter. The medical team look at his abdominal CT scan. Not only is the mass of the ground beef sitting in his stomach, but they also see that it's squeezing out and pushing up against the pancreas, compressing it. This can cause a backup of digestive enzyme flow, building pressure up inside the organ and without proper outflow being available, the pancreas starts to digest itself, ending in pancreatitis. Itis meaning an inflammation. Because the kidneys are close by too, it looks like the burger mass is squeezing in, pushing against the blood vessels, limiting blood flow to the kidneys, causing them to shut down. The only way to fix this is for the burger to not be in his abdomen anymore. Naturally, the body should move this from normal function, but as the days pass, the medical team notes that GF's condition keeps getting worse. His abdomen remains swollen and large bits of beef appear to be blocking all movement through his intestines. A tube is inserted into his nose to get access to his stomach, where they try to wash and pump it multiple times, but it seems like the beef is packed in tight, with possibly the evolution of gas in his GI tract. Competitive eating isn't necessarily a new phenomenon, but the amounts eaten at the highest levels have gone up substantially. In the United States, we have a hot dog eating contest every year in New York. Legend has it that it's more than 100 years old, but at the first recorded contest in 1972, the winner ate 14 hot dogs with buns. The record today for that same contest is 76 hot dogs in 10 minutes. These are professional, competitive eaters, but sometimes, us regular folk might find ourselves eating more than we originally anticipated. And if you want to prevent yourself from eating way too much and portion your meals, you could order from this video's sponsor, Factor. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. They offer delicious, flavor-packed options on the menu every week to fit a variety of lifestyles from keto to calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and protein plus. If you're looking to mix things up, you can add a protein to select vegan and veggie meals every week. I used to spend a couple hundred bucks every month on groceries and also time to cook all the food and also time to eat it. When I heard of Factor, I bought it with my own money. I've been a subscriber for a while now. It's not just saving time against meal prep, but the actual time to eat a meal is so much shorter. I'm not kidding, it's awesome. Whenever I cook, it takes me like 30 minutes to an hour to eat it. I don't know why, but that's not the case here. Factor offered to sponsor this video. Head to factor75.com or click the link in the description below and use code EMU50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. It covers everything that I'm looking for as a person, looking for food, and I highly recommend it. Some of the best information that we have on the body during competitive eating is from a study that was done in 2007 in one of the top competitive eaters at the time. He was compared to a regular untrained person and both had images taken of their stomachs while they ate a large quantity of hot dogs. The untrained person stopped at seven dogs because he couldn't eat anymore, and the image of his stomach showed no distension, meaning that he felt full without his stomach stretching to a high degree. On the other hand, the competitive eater finished 36 hot dogs in 10 minutes, and images showed that his stomach stretched to fit the glitzies, and as he kept eating, it kept stretching. The muscle was able to do all of this while not contracting or churning any of the food, as the final image showed the stomach flexible as much as it needed to be to accommodate the size and weight of 36 hot dogs. 
The problem is, physically, we don't know what happens long-term to people who do these competitions and have gone through the physical and mental training to do so. Clearly, some level of control needs to be acquired in practice because regular people who aren't trained to do this can't do it, no matter how big or how hungry that they think they are. We know that the stomach is a muscle, and muscles are controlled by nerves. If elite competitive eaters are all like this one in this imaging study, is it possible that over years and decades something could happen to the muscle? What if one day it can't stretch like that anymore, or it's stretched like that for the rest of their life? Or even more delicately, what if something happens to the nerves where they can't control the muscle anymore? This would result in something called gastroparesis, where there's delayed movement out of the stomach. And issues like that aren't isolated. What if later in their life, in their 50s or 60s or 70s, they need to be on medicines for their blood pressure or for insulin resistance, diabetes, or something related to mental health? Some of those medicines can have an impact on gut, muscle, and the corresponding nerves. I'll give you an example. There's a new extremely popular class of weight loss compounds that were originally diabetes medicines that could possibly cause this gastroparesis. And there's no telling if these competitors would be on this medicine at some time later in their life, either for weight loss or for glycemic control and diabetes. There's other considerations too. One being that competitive eaters may not be able to feel full or satisfied unlike the untrained person, because their stomach keeps stretching and stretching and stretching without the feedback that enough is enough. The person who participated in that imaging study himself said, deep down, I've wondered how long-term competing is for my health. I can't ignore that feeling anymore. Other proposed problems that can come from this excess competitive eating are tears that can happen in the esophagus, but documentation of that actually happening so far are not so clear. But what is clear is GF's case. Five days after he presented to the emergency room, his organ shutdown was getting worse. His pancreas could become so inflamed that it can start to cause long-term problems, one of which could be growing a giant zit-like structure on top of it. Because the eight-pound burger was still sitting there without any movement, it's stretching the walls of his stomach. Pressure on the blood vessels in the stomach muscle increases and blood flow decreases, starving it of oxygen. If this keeps up, parts of his stomach can't survive and it will break, causing a perforation leaking burger, stomach acid, and bacteria into the rest of his body, which can be fatal. If the stomach can't move the burger and attempts to wash and pump his stomach can't remove the undigested ground beef, the only other option is to surgically go in and remove it for him. But as GF was getting prepped for the operation, he suddenly noticed movement inside. He felt his guts immediately quake in his body. A massive passing of flatulence lasting several minutes started happening, and then a tremendous bowel movement preceded him being discharged from the hospital as he made a full recovery. Patient GF is portrayed by my good friend Guga Foods. We made a video together on his channel. You can see that one right here. Thanks so much for watching. Take care of yourself and be well.